Praise God. Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you all. This is uh, the next part of the book of Daniel. I did the two preludes, the tabernacle, the Ten Commandments. Uh, we did uh, Daniel 1, 1 through 7 yesterday. We're going through 8 through 16. So just a quick recap. Let's go through it again. This is... Uh, it has to be here on YouTube for now, but this is also from our website, so this will come down later, and um, I'll get I'll fix that light in a minute. So Daniel, Daniel, es, he was uh, escorted out of Jerusalem to Babylon. Okay, Daniel spends the rest of his life advising foreign kings of two empires, Babylon, which is 50 miles uh, south of modern Baghdad, and later Susa, which later uh, modern Sush. Okay, it's Iran, where he advises the Persians. Persians who overpowered the Babylonians. So, Daniel went from the king's palace to the lion's den, ultimately. So, a prince in Israel, okay, Daniel's just a young man, uh, maybe in his 20s or maybe a little bit younger, when he marched into exile a thousand miles from home. All right, he's taken with other Jews to Babylon and what is now Iraq. So, this forced exile is a Babylonian policy of intimidation. Intended to show weaker countries who's boss and, and to uh, arm twist rulers into sending annual tax money to the empire or risk losing more top tier citizens. Okay, so once in Babylon, Daniel impresses the leaders with his intellect and his good sense. The king eventually appoints him as one of his advisors, but he's not just another voice in the royal think tank. He became a reputation for two specialties, dream interpretation and prophecy. So both of these gifts um, endear him to one king after another in both the Babylonian Empire and the Persian Empire that follows. But all the gratitude and special consideration he gets uh, from the king only stirs up jealousy among his fellow advisors. So they conjure up a scheme that lands Daniel in lion's den, but the plot backfires. Daniel survives. And the king feeds the advisors to the lions, okay? So after the first six chapters of storytelling, the book will shift to uh, reporting Daniel's bizarre visions, okay? And some are so strange that the angel Gabriel had to explain them. And there's still a lot of uh, explanations that still need to be made for the explanations today. Okay, so we went through one through seven. Uh, you read one, one, four. It says, so he, uh, he's groomed for palace duty okay select only strong healthy good-looking young men make sure they're well versed in every branch of learning they're gifted with knowledge and good judgment and are suited to serve in a royal palace is what the king told them okay so king nebuchadnezzar is looking for advisors among his political prisoners so he describes for his chief of staff the qualities that he's looking for among the young men of judah's royal family and other noble families who have been brought to Babylon as captives. Okay, so those who qualify will enter a three-year course of study at the palace. We, we discussed this. They'll learn the language, literature of, of Babylon and everything possible to prepare them for advising the king. So four Jews impress the staff and are admitted to the program. All right, Daniel and three others, which we talked about, they're Babylon... Um, they're best known by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, so as royal students, the king's palace, in the king's palace, they are to eat what the king provides. But the Jews want to stay kosher. They don't want to defile themselves spiritually by eating a food that um, that they're not that that's forbidden in Leviticus 11. They they're very obedient. Okay. That includes pork, animal fat, or any meat not completely drained of blood. The, the scripture says in Leviticus 7.26, No matter where you live, you must never consume the blood of any bird or animal. And Daniel asks if he, can, uh, if he and his colleagues can observe their kosher diet. But the chief of staff says, If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid the king will have me beheaded. In Daniel 1.10, we're going to get to it. So Daniel convinces the man uh, to conduct a 10-day test. Daniel and his colleagues, they eat only vegetables. So after 10 days, they look healthier than any of the others in the program. 
So the chief of staff allows them to live as vegetarians, all right, which is the only way um, they can be certain that the food prepared for them is kosher. They have no way of knowing if the Babylonians uh, butchers are, are draining the, the meat of his blood or not. So God gives these four Jewish men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom because of their obedience. Okay, so it says the ability, the special ability to interpret the meaning of visions and dreams in Daniel 1 17, which we will get to soon. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's go on into, let's pick it up to where we left off. Daniel chapter 1. We're going to go into, you can read verse 8 through 16. And I've already did. I'm going to go through um, the chat, the verses, just like we did yesterday. You need to watch part one. If you have not caught up, go ahead and watch part one. Okay, so I want you to read the scripture. Don't just listen. Actually read with me. Daniel, go to chapter one. Let's start at verse eight. You read 8 through 16. I've already done it. But I've broken down for you what they're talking about right here. Like, this is the first three is in verse uh, chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel resolved the king, king's food and wine, and therefore he asked. I'm going to explain it to you and break it down. Okay? All right. So Daniel resolved, the first one. All right, the word resolved carries the idea Daniel purposed in his heart. So this right here, Daniel was talking about Daniel purposed in his heart is what it's, is what it's saying to you. Okay, or, or Daniel determined in his heart. Daniel set, his, set upon his heart. He was a man of strong convictions, okay, and he consistently acted on them. All right, going on into eight, it talks about the king's food and wine. So why didn't Daniel and his friends want to eat the king's food? And I'll give you four possible explanations. The food was prepared by Gentiles, so it was unclean according to the requirements of the Mosaic law. Also, the food, I mean, the fair probably included foods that were forbidden by the Mosaic law. Okay, and pagan nations often devoted food to pagan deities before eating it. So if Daniel and his friends had eaten what they were served, they would have defiled themselves by rendering honor to the false gods. Um, also, Daniel and his friends might have been rejecting the luxurious lifestyle altogether, including the extravagant food offered to those in the king's court. Perhaps they reasoned that such materialism might defile them or lure them away from a complete commitment to God. And one more thing is possible. The Jewish people drank wine diluted by water. Okay. The Babylonians did not dilute their wine. And strong drink was unacceptable to the Jews. You can see Proverbs 20 verse 1 about that. So also Babylonians poured their wine on pagan altars in the worship of their deities. So Daniel and his friends would have wanted no part of that. Right. No part of that. Okay, so ultimately, Daniel resolved that even, even though he lived in a land that did not honor God's law, he himself would nevertheless do everything possible. He would do everything possible to continue obeying the Lord's command. Now, you're catching. He's obedient to God. So walking in faithfulness to God was harder in Babylon than in Judah. But God rewarded Daniel's faithfulness for being faithful to God. All right. Going on in verse 8, it said, therefore he asked. Okay. James 2.17 tells us faith by itself. If it does not have works with it, it's dead. So Daniel, it, Daniel didn't just make a resolution in his heart, meaning faith. But also, he acted on that resolution. He put the works to his faith. He did it. He took immediate steps to make other arrangements for food. Okay, going on to chapter 9, I mean, verse 9. God gave Daniel favor and compassion. Why did God give Daniel favor and compassion? Because of his obedience to God. Super important, y'all. God gave Daniel favor and compassion. Right, God has the power to turn the hearts of unbelieving leaders so that they are favorable to God's people. 
You can see in Exodus 11.3 also. So he also honors those who honor him. Did you hear me? God honors the people who honor him. Are you honoring God? Are you obeying him? Because you love him with a happy heart? Because when you honor God, he honors you. Okay, so when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. When you please the, that, that is Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. When you please God, he makes your enemies be at peace with you. You're making God happy when you obey him. Okay, uh, going on to 10. I fear my Lord, the king. So the chief Enoch was charged with overseeing the physical and mental development of Daniel and his friends. If the king was not pleased with this development, that would reflect badly on the chief Enoch and he would be punished or even lose his life. He was scared he was going to be beheaded. He's like, if you... Um, if I let you eat these vegetables and you get all skinny and withered away and all pale and everything, he gonna, king going to have my head. Because I'm supposed to be raising y'all nice and strong. Okay? So, but God looked out for them. They looked better than the rest of them. Intended to may be worse condition, which is evidenced by looking worse. You know, if you eat this way, you may look skinny and frail. Right? So, he, he said, my head would be, I'd be in danger of losing my head. He's afraid disappointing the king could result for his execution. Okay, let's go on to 11. Daniel said, notice, I want you to read that. Notice that Daniel did not rebel. He didn't rebel. He didn't use harsh language or raise his voice or get into a heated argument. Instead, he used good judgment by courteously offering a reasonable alternative to the steward. He came up with a creative solution that avoided offense and it enabled him and his friends to remain faithful to God in the process. Okay. And I love to talk about the steward. Daniel um, surmised from the chief Enoch's words that his request for a special diet had been denied. Daniel approached the steward who had been placed in charge of the four youths. Okay, Daniel went up to him. Daniel requested a 10-day period in which they could be fed only vegetables and water. And he implied that he and his friends would have a better appearance in 10 days than those eating the king's food. They did not want to fail God. They want to honor God with everything they got, y'all. So the steward had no authority on his own. So he likely okayed this, you know, with the chief Enoch before proceeding. So the God who brings favor in the eyes of others was clearly at work behind the scenes here. All right, let's read about the, in verse 12, the vegetables. We can read. The Old Testament word translated vegetables means things grown from seeds, right? So the word could refer to either fresh vegetables or uh, wheat, barley, grain, something like that. Vegetables things grown from seeds, okay, were a safe choice for the Mosaic Law. It did not categorize any vegetables as unclean, okay? So, therefore, no matter what vegetables were brought to Daniel and his friends, they would not be defiled by eating them, okay? Now, there's a few Bible expositors have suggested that possi the possibility that the addition to avoiding defilement, uh, Daniel avoided meat, and other foods in order to engage in a kind of a fast as an expression of their mourning, having been exiled or something, you know. But you got to note that their attitudes before the Babylonians were always upbeat and positive. Okay, it says, so he listened in 14. So Daniel's suggestion was okayed and put into practice. All right, and 15, and he says he had he was better in appearance and fatter in flesh. So to be better in appearance and fatter in flesh was taken as evidence that they were healthier than those who ate the king's diets. And this was precisely the opposite of what the Ashvanes, the, the chief Enoch, had feared. 
okay? I was speaking to somebody today, one of you, talking about evidence. You know, I, I'm going to drop here, go here, off here for a minute. When you live your life for Jesus Christ, when you're obeying God and you truly, when you truly love him, y'all, there's going to be evidence that you love him. Okay, when you are living your life for the Lord Jesus Christ to be a witness to other people, it will be evidence in the way you live your life, in the way you talk, the way you look, the way you act, the way you think. There will be evidence that God is your God. Evidence. There was evidence that they were healthier than the ones who ate the king's food. God made sure of it, okay? So, uh, let's see where I'm at. There's some scholars have been careful to point out that this verse cannot be taken as a biblical endorsement of, veg, you know, of being a vegetarian. He's not saying you have to be a vegetarian here. Okay. It was ultimately God who made them healthy and gave them the outer uh, appearance of health. So the youths had honored God and now God honored them by keeping them healthy before this king's eyeballs. Okay, the, the vegetables are definitely healthy, right? God ultimately blessed them because they obeyed his will. Not simply because they ate vegetables instead of other foods, because it was all about God. That's why. And they kept it all about God. So scripture stands, stands against legalists who, for religious reasons, require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. All right, for everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of prayer, 1 Timothy 4, 3 through 5. So acceptable foods certainly include meat, Genesis 9, 3, okay? So in Old Testament times, the Jews believed based on divine revelation that health came from pleasing God while sickness and disease came from displeasing God. So God himself affirmed in Exodus 15, 26, he said, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes, means obey him, y'all. God is so firm on me teaching you obedience, every one of you. If you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments, pay attention, make sure you're following them and keep all his statutes. Okay, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians for I am the Lord your healer. So God commanded, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from among you. Exodus 23, 25. Scripture promises, y'all, that if you fear the Lord and turn away from evil, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Proverbs 3, 7 through 8. It's super important, y'all, to obey God and his statutes. Obey the Lord, love to do it, Obey him no matter what. Don't no matter what. Okay? So 16, going on to 16, says, So the steward took away. So as a result of the 10-day uh, experiment, um, a permanent diet of vegetables and water was allowed for Daniel and his friends. That way they didn't have to worry about getting defiled by blood and the meat and stuff like that. So... Some of the major themes here that we went over is talking about avoiding defilement. Okay, the ancient Jews believed that a number of things could render a person unclean. And for example, a woman was rendered ceremonially unclean during ministration and following childbirth. Okay, touching a dead animal rendered one unclean, as uh, did touching any dead body. All right, a person with a skin infection was considered unclean. This is all, this is the, most of this is in Leviticus and Numbers. Um, sexual discharges uh, rendered one unclean. The, Samari the Samaritans of New Testament times were considered unclean because they were of mixed ancestry, Israelite and Assyrian. You can see John 4, 9. 
So eating certain prohibited foods rendered you unclean and defiled. Leviticus 11, 46-47. Ezekiel 4, 13-14. Hosea 9, verses 3 and 4. And this is what Daniel was seeking to avoid in Daniel 1, 8. Okay, talking about drinking the wine. So in day-to-day -day meals in biblical times, wine was often mixed with water as a means of purifying it. Wine was mixed with water. Not straight up. So a popular beverage of ancient times was 20 parts water mixed with one part wine. Okay, it was essentially wine-flavored water, pretty much. Okay, so in other cases, one part of wine might be mixed with one part water or no water at all. And this was considered strong wine, pretty much straight up. Okay, so drinking wine in modern uh, moderation is permissible for Christians. Did you hear how they did? They, they, they mixed one part wine with how many parts of water? You know, um, mm, can't find it, but they, okay, they mixed one part wine with one part water. Okay. Anyway, they had less wine in it than it did water. It's like water flavored wine. But to drink the alcohol straight up, God tells you in the word to stay away from strong, strong drink. He don't want you drunk. Okay. It's as simple as that. Okay. Uh, 1 Timothy 3, 3 through 8. You can see Romans 14, 21. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12, or 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Drunkenness is prohibited. Ephesians 5, 18. Okay, moving on. It talks about a good conscience. The overall theme here, Daniel and his friends were concerned not only about moral purity, but also about ceremonial purity. So they wanted to avoid any kind of defilement. They may have been forced to move to Babylon, right? But it was important to them to maintain a good conscience in all, all things. So this is a, a thread that runs all through Daniel. Okay, we're reminded of the Apostle Paul's instruction in 1 Timothy 1.19 for young Timothy to keep a strong faith as well as a good conscience. And Daniel is a good example of the kind of man Paul and Timothy wanted to be. Okay, so... Uh, if you want to dig in deeper and, and do some cross-references, you can look at the unclean foods the Israelites were to avoid. Right here, put down unclean, unclean food the Israelites were to avoid. To dig a little deeper. Leviticus 4, 13-14. Hosea 9, 3-4. 1 Corinthians 8. You can also uh, dig a little deeper and get see the health. The good health is promised to you for your obedience. Cross references there is Exodus 15, 26, Exodus 23, 25, Deuteronomy 7, 15, 2 Kings 20, verse 5, Psalms 30, verse 2, Proverbs 3, verse 7 and 8, James 5, verses 14, 15. You want better health? Get more obedient to God, y'all. Okay, and some of the life lessons that you can learn from these verses that we've already been over is to be faithful to God. And God gives favor to those who are obedient to Him, who love Him. And be a person of integrity. Listen, verses for you to meditate on here. Write it down. 2 Corinthians 8.21 Titus Chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. Hebrews 13, 18. James 1, verses 22 through 25. To meditate on, to be a faith, more faithful to God. And he'll give you favor and be a person of integrity. All right, we're going to stop there. Uh, we'll continue on. Look for the uh, video here on the playlist under Daniel for right now. Um, Google Meets, in just a few minutes. The code is RAO-UBOF-MVI. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, God bless you all. The website is, is, is not up and running yet, but it's in the progress. It might be a couple more weeks. I don't know. 
but uh, we're getting things ready. So thank you all so, so much to those few of you that are supporting this ministry and helping it to get more avenues to grow and, and more. Thank you all for those of you that helped me get this right here to help teach you with. I mean, to tell you all, it's a big help. Thank you so much for helping God's kingdom and the ministry grow and get things that I need to get to help better teach you with. Thank you all. All right. Any of you that want to help is in the description. Thank you all so much. And I know God will reward you because you're honoring God's command for help in the ministry. So thank you so much. I'm so happy to be feeding you. Thank you for feeding back. All right. God bless each one of you.